Let's do a teardown of this very special unit here. This is a traveling wave tube amplifier. You got the microwave input here and the output here. There is very little electronics in this one, actually none. The only electronic part in here is a very specialized vacuum tube that actually amplifies the signal by a very special uh, phenomenon. So we're going to take this apart, see how it looks inside. If you turn it around like this, in the picture in the beginning, you saw that this part had a special door in the front with a bunch of connectors. And this one is sadly, the wire is chopped off. But this wire goes to the connector on the tube. Here you can see some information of that made by Siemens. Uh, it says a transmitter amplifier, 4 gigahertz. We got some numbers here. Here we got the side, we got these uh, knobs here that control the waveguide filter. Got some screws in the waveguide filter that these are attached to. And you can change the how deep they are, go into the waveguide. Here you can see inside of the waveguide, you can see here the two screws, which are here. And on the bottom you can see the vacuum tube. You are not supposed to look into this waveguide when this uh, unit is turned on. And this is the back of the unit. You can see the two wires here that control the screws. And we've got this uh, part here, which is the collector for the, for the traveling wave tube. This is actually connected to ground. Let's begin removing... Remo Let's begin removing the tube, so I don't damage it. So very fine frets. It was the lid. And here's the connector. These wires are actually connected directly to those wires up here. That one down to the side here. This is a spring-loaded disc that holds it in place. This spring here, this brass. Let's remove the tube. And here's the traveling wave tube or W3. So now the tube is removed and I will uh, remove these uh, plates from the sides. We've got one here, one on the other side and one on the top here. So you can see how it looks inside of this unit. If we begin by removing this part here, you can see that we got some a lot of uh, mechanical units in here. Not so much electronics, but to remove this uh, stiffening bracket here as well. Held in by some screws and the washers. Remove this one now. It's not copper, it's copper plated uh, metal iron. You can see here, it's quite magnetic, strong magnets here and here. I want to remove the other side. Yes, I removed some covers. Now you can see how uh, it looks inside of it. As you can see, there is not so much electronics inside of that. We've got this uh, tube chamber here and this uh, like spring looking thing is here for controlling the screws in the waveguide by turning that. The whole thing is moving around, doesn't look so good. Well, I damaged something, maybe the other way. Yes, they should not be that stiff. Maybe the other one is better. Yes, this one was better. By doing this, I'm screwing in the screw into the waveguide and by that can uh, change the frequency it uh, passes through it. Here's the other ones, those on the exiting waveguide for output. These were pretty nice, not so much resistance on these ones. Yes, here's the underside of it. You can see the tube here, it's a copper tube with the actual uh, wave traveling tube is inside of it. We've got five of these rings, maybe for concentrating the magnetic field on those parts. And with these big uh, magnets here, permanent magnets, wonder how they could do them that powerful in that time. We've got this uh, quite interesting thing here. There's a cover here, we can uh, take up. 
it says uh, field corrector here in German uh, making the field that goes into the input waveguide a special way hits the tube in a correct spot yes and the whole thing is just like a big magnet these are not copper it's like steel or something quite magnetic and there is quite a powerful magnetic field inside of that here we've got the other side we can see the rings here pretty heavy duty made pretty thick steel everywhere we've got a signal wire so when you open the lid here it will detect that and shut the system down because it's not good for touching like 1400 volts which this tube is driven by pretty high voltage so yes some uh, safety features like this one and when you remove the cover from the front you're actually disconnecting the tube there was a bit of a connector on the side of the whole uh, lid that com covers this one and here's the back of it We've got this uh, collector here I think it was uh, force air cooled We've got the cold air going in here and blowing out of these holes on the top and got some holes on the bottom here as you can see where the air came out it just took a bunch of uh, scrap and uh, dust let's kind of remove that let's have a look in here so it's a bit dusty so the air should go in here going around the collector and out of these holes and the collector should poke out a little bit in there perhaps all the way of this uh, brass end here but somehow this part got pretty warm because all the power this had like uh, 20 to 30 percent uh, efficiency so all that uh, 70 to 80 uh, percent would be dissipated in this one it should be pretty warm this is like a 15 watt tube i think i'll put the data sheet here so you can see it you can see the right correct power for this tube now i place the vacuum tube back in place see the whole brass part is inside of this chamber that can get cooled off by the air yes and here we can see the connection block that goes to this uh, connector here and this wire that came here connected to this port here so yes it's not so much of it just like two wires for the uh, filament one cathode uh, maybe two uh, grids anode so it's not so much of it doesn't need so many specialized components for this type of application these are quite reliable are still used in uh, some kind of uh, satellites and uh, high power applications pretty interesting unit just uh, one tube some high voltage to it and it can amplify microwave signals now let's have a close-up on this RW3 traveling wave tube. In front here we've got the electron gun and uh, accelerating anode on the front here. Shooting out a bunch of electrons in the channel. Got this uh, fine wire here, it's like a spring. And these glass rods keeping it uh, in place. The microwaves should come in here. Inside of this uh, chamber here is some kind of coating, special coating here. The spring ends somewhere here with the glass rods and the electrons should go through this tube and into the collector here which is grounded and the amplified microwaves should come out from this part here. This is some kind of mica plate or some glass plate here. This is not actual metal. They are quite efficient like 20 to 30 percent but the semiconductors it is much better but as you saw in the teardown there is like nothing in electronic wise in heat in this you just got some uh, high voltage here and that's the only thing you need for operating this thing then in semiconductors these are specialized components for the high frequency microwave signals and that's one of the reasons that these uh, traveling wave tubes are still in use especially in power applications and now just let's screw everything back together again yes now everything is almost back together just need to put the tube back in here put it quite carefully because the magnetic field is quite strong Wants to push the tube down 
As in here, I got this recess here that should go into the slot. Works in place. I got this spring part. The special connector. It doesn't look like any other tube connectors. Pretty strange pin out on that one. Pin distancing. There we go. And the top cover. And now it is back together again. Hope you found this video interesting. And thanks for watching.